Bill? What day is it? Hey gang, welcome back to Hey Bill, What Day Is It? I'm sure that you'll... Eileen, where are you? Is that you hiding behind my question mark icon up there? <laughs> Come on out of there. No? Why? Aren't you aren't scared, are you? Come on out. You know I need your help. And besides, I'll protect you. Come on, we'll start over. You can do it. <clears throat> hey gang, welcome back to Hey Bill, what day is it? I'm sure that you'll be able to spot pictures and caricatures of the focus of this week's national celebration all around you this week. We've been surrounded by ghouls and goblins and ghosts and grisly characters because this week we celebrate Halloween. And who better to concentrate on than the granddaddy of all monsters? This character has been terrifying folks for over 200 years in both literature and films. Coming up this week on the last Friday in October is National Frankenstein Day. On this day we recognize author Mary Shelley, the novel Frankenstein, and her characters, Dr. Frankenstein and the Monster. According to some sources, the day is observed on August 30th in honor of Mary Shelley's birthday. However, we're going to stick with this one. Dating back to the 1800s, Frankenstein's monster is one of the best known horror characters of all time. Notice I said Frankenstein's monster. Victor Frankenstein is the name of the young scientist who created the monster. He was the first mad scientist, but according to Mary Shelley, he was based on real life researchers and their experiments. She should know because she secretly did similar experiments in a private laboratory. But more on that later. Most people incorrectly call the monster Frankenstein. So I hear you calling, if Dr. Frankenstein is the creator, what did they call his creation? What was Frankenstein's monster called? Yes, that's it. He was called a monster. He is also variously referred to as creature, Fiend, the demon, wretch, devil, thing, being, and ogre in the novel. But the monster, when speaking to his creator, Victor Frankenstein, called himself the Adam of your labors. The creature recognizes that just like the biblical Adam, he was created apparently without any kind of link to any other being in existence. The novel tells the story of how Frankenstein, a Swiss student of natural science, who's obsessed with the reanimation of dead or lifeless matter, creates an artificial man from pieces of corpses and brings his creature to life. The creature thinks he is like Adam because he is an innocent creation who feels lonesome without his Eve. Frankenstein refuses to make a mate for his monster, and therefore the monster becomes very lonely and miserable. It's not a good idea to have an eight-foot-tall, hideously ugly creature with long black hair, black lips, and glowing eyes get mad at you. The monster turned upon his creator and killed him. When the film world discovered Shelley's book, it created its own kind of monster. Since the first movie was released, more than 60 movies or shorts on the theme of Frankenstein have been released. There have been many spoofs and takeoffs of this beloved monster in film, comic books, and TV. Everything from Frankenstein's Ant, Disney's Frankenweenie, TV's The Munster, and even a wishbone dog version. Edison Studios produced the very first film version, Frankenstein, in 1910. Since I just referred again to Mary Shelley, I'm sure you're all wondering if she based her book, Frankenstein, on a true story. Sad to say, but in some ways, she did. However, I'm sure it's not what you were expecting. Recently discovered and released documentation has revealed that Mary Shelley's Frankenstein was indeed based on a true story. After some damning evidence was uncovered, it was discovered that Shelley herself had a somewhat dark side. 
Not only did she reportedly keep her dead husband's heart in her desk for 30 years, but she actually tried many similar body parts transplant experiments on her pet dog, Richard. I suppose instead of writing horror novels, she could have gone on to become a successful, if not weird, veterinarian. It reminds me of the story of a young veterinarian who also became a taxidermist. His motto was, either way, you get your dog back. The remainder of this account, I believe, lends great credence to accounts of rampant mental illness in the beginning of the 19th century in Great Britain. One of the best known actors to be cast in the role of the monster was Boris Karloff, a British actor who went on to play the character many more times and subsequent roles as horror characters of villains. Folks today would probably recognize his voice in the characters like Captain Hook from Peter Pan and the Grinch in the well-known Dr. Seuss Christmas special, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Karloff in real life was a wonderful, warm-hearted man to whom children seemed to be drawn automatically. He was once asked if he regretted the role of monster and being typecast into horror roles much of his career. He replied, the Frankenstein monster was the best friend I ever had. He was the thing that made me, that lifted me from where I was to wherever I've gotten. In 1974, Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder wrote and produced what has often been called the funniest movie ever made when they created Young Frankenstein, which was a takeoff on Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein, Son of Frankenstein, and The Ghost of Frankenstein. You begin to get a sense of what Young Frankenstein is like when you read that its genre is comedy horror, a weird combination, you'll have to admit. Breaking all the Hollywood rules, Brooks and Wilder insisted that the film be shot in black and white, true to the original movie. Many of the film's original themes and details were brought into the movie. For instance, they were able to locate and use the laboratory set from the original 30s film, carrying fans back for decades. Once while passing the meat case in the grocery store, our then 12-year-old son was looking over all of the different kinds of meat from liver to brains to hearts to kidneys to tongues to lungs to even stomachs. Knowing how I could go out in my shop and build almost anything, he looked up at me and said, Dad, can we make a Franken cow? Horrified at the thought, I weakly replied in the negative. I couldn't picture blood on my tools that wasn't my own. Mankind seems to have a fixation with scaring ourselves half to death. The comedian Stephen Wright once mused on the question, what if you get scared half to death twice? Makes you kind of go, hmm. Lots of our entertainment, up to and including our amusement park rides, gain their popularity by frightening us and playing on our fears. Now, I like amusement park rides, and I don't really fear death, but I'm pretty sure I don't want to go that way. So they continue to work on me. The central theme of all these movies is the reanimation or bringing back to life of a dead person. In the Frankenstein movies, the creator, Dr. Frankenstein, was eventually destroyed by his creation. When we compare that back to Jesus in the Bible, Jesus is the creator of everything. But he did not create monsters. Instead, we were created perfect, who through our own actions and disobedience have alienated ourselves from the Creator. That separation made us monsters in the eyes of God. The act of disobedience made us sinners. The big difference is that instead of wanting to destroy his own creation, man, God sent his son to die a sacrificial death for our own transgressions. His own bodily resurrection and his, by his own power gives him the unique qualification to make our forgiveness possible. When we invite him into our hearts, he will perform the miracle of the cleansing of our sin, giving us the salvation we so desperately need to be able to spend eternity in heaven with him. One act of sacrificial love made Jesus both our creator and our redeemer. I'm Bill Wasor, and this is Hey Bill, What Day Is It? And I'm inviting you to join me in the forgiveness process 
so that we can all spend eternity together with Him. That will definitely be a triumphant day.